This program is brought to you by realestate.com.au. With more homes for sale than anywhere else, realestate.com.au is Australia's number one address in property. It is good to have your company here on Business Now. Let's go around the country and see how the weekend auction markets fared. And REA Group tells us around Australia there were 1,647 auctions. That's about 200 more than last week, with a clearance rate of just over 63%. In Sydney, there were 554 auctions, a clearance rate there right on 63%. In Melbourne, 648 auctions, and around two-thirds of those were sold. Brisbane had 93 auctions and a clearance rate just under 68%. Adelaide remained the country's strongest market with 75 auctions and the clearance rate you can see 80 percent the act had 43 auctions 72 percent of those were sold and wa had just five auctions but 496 private sales Anne Flaherty is an economist with REA Group. And Anne, for now, suggestions from some economists that the rba will raise interest rates and not cut them it didn't seem to have much effect over the weekend no, people certainly don't seem to be too worried about interest rates moving higher just yet. Um, look, there is more talk of this, and it's un undoubtedly this will make some people quite unsettled, particularly those who have mortgages already. But we are continuing to see really strong buyer demand, um, which is great news. Clearance rates have remained really um, resilient, um, and in some markets we're seeing actually quite exceptional clearance rates. Just go to one other aspect of this, and that is the number of single-person homes that are now out there, which you say is one of the fastest-growing areas of Australia's demographics. That changes Australia's housing mix, which has traditionally been skewed to family homes. Well, that's right. We've been seeing a growing mismatch over time between the actual stock of houses and units out there versus what people are looking to buy, and the changing demographic is behind that. So a lot of our houses are decades old now and they were built at a time when the average family looked quite different. Around one in four um, dwellings is now a single person home. And so what that means is that um, we have an excess of larger homes. We're also seeing a really significant rise in, you know, two, two individuals, no children. Um, so what we've really seen is that Four plus bedroom houses remain the most common dwelling type out there, but we're actually seeing people more likely to search to buy two bedroom houses than four bedroom. Three okay. bedrooms remain the most popular, but yeah. you know, it's quite astonishing to see that. Oh, I was going to say, because during COVID, of course, people, because they were stuck at home, went for bigger homes and felt they could work from home. But you're quite right that the, if the, the family mix is going to change in the future, smaller families, the question of whether those big four-bedroom homes, which are more, most prevalent on the market, really have a place in, in Australia's suburbs uh, in the future housing mix. Yeah, it's a really good point. And I think that more and more future developments are not going to have those four bedrooms they are becoming less popular and also less necessary. You know, if you've got two people and um, they're working from home, a three bedroom dwelling can serve your purposes. You know, you can, you can have two offices with a three bedroom house, um, but we are increasingly seeing fewer people search for those larger homes. We are seeing the opposite in units though. People are increasingly searching for three bedroom units and there's currently um, a real shortage of three bedroom units out there. I think affordability is the key driver here, especially for young families who've been priced out of buying houses. They're now looking for your larger units. And that also goes to older Australians who are downsizing from their established homes and then looking for those three you know, bedroom units, especially because there's less maintenance. Yeah, that's right. And, you know, it, it's not just units, though. I think that when people downsize, often they look for smaller houses. Not everyone wants to live in a unit complex. So I think that's another driver for smaller houses. But then, of course, you know, for those people who are looking to live in a complex where they don't have to worry about as much body corporate takes mm -hmm. care of things, then mm -hmm. it is beneficial. So, yeah. you know, again, we're seeing a real change in what people are looking for. I'll tell you what, Anne Flaherty, always good to have you in the program. And many thanks for your time today.